Okay, rolling, rolling on both ends. In my previous video, I showed you how I built this, my temperature controlled DIY lithium battery. So now I'm gonna show you how I installed it in the van, how it's working, and then what it all costs to do this. Now, right? <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the setup first. As you can tell, maybe, uh, it looks a bit different back here than my previous setup. If you followed along with the channel, you know I used to have AGM batteries back here because I didn't have a big budget for my electrical system. So in order for me to run this lithium battery, I needed to do a few upgrades. This time around, I wanted to make sure everything was fused properly and I had a way to power off each component individually just in case I needed to troubleshoot something. So I went and checked out explorist.life. There are tons of tutorials and wiring diagrams that you can purchase. So I went on there and I tried to find something that was pretty close to what I already had because I have 600 watts of solar up top and I have this 2000 watt Ames power pure sign inverter and I didn't want to change those up because those are kind of like big ticket items. Luckily I found something that was pretty close to what I was looking for. There was this big list of items that I needed to snag in order to change my system over to lithium and I started out by grabbing a Victron 100 volt 50 amp charge controller. I also grabbed a Renogy 60 amp DC to DC battery charger so I could charge off the van's alternator. I kept my Ames 12 volt 2000 watt inverter since it still works fine with lithium. But then I had to grab a range of wires from two gauge all the way to 14 gauge along with all sorts of fuses and breakers and master switches, etc. And I'm not gonna go into like great detail detail on everything I purchased and how it all got hooked together because you could go to his website and buy the same exact diagram I have and be able to do exactly what I did and it'll make way more sense than having me sit here and blab through it. Arch. But I will point out a few things that I had a little struggle with, just in case you run into the same thing. With this Renogy 60 amp DC to DC battery charger, there's a D plus cable that goes to it that enables it to run. And you have to get that cable all the way up to the front of your vehicle. And there's a couple ways that you can hook it up depending on the year of your vehicle and what type of vehicle you have. I have a 2015 Ram ProMaster 2500. So I ran the cable, I had to pop all the plastics off. This is the cable, it's a little 18 gauge cable. And then I ran it up. I ended up taking a fuse tap and running it directly into the small fuse panel underneath the steering wheel. It's important you hook this up to the proper fuse though because you don't want this charger running while the van isn't running or else you'll just drain your van's battery. It ended up being fuse number 31, which is a little five amp fuse. But if you pop into that and put another fuse in there with it, this thing will turn on when you turn your van on and it'll turn off when you turn it off. I will put that five amp fuse right next to this 15 amp and that 15 amp is in there for the uh, this wire itself that goes to the DC to DC battery charger. So the light is off. The light is on. Okay, I'm gonna go kill it again and see if it turns off. And it's off. Yes. The other thing you need to do is configure this charger for the type of battery you have. And there's five dip switches for you to do that with. For lithium, you need to set the first and fifth to off, and then two, three, and four on. Once you have that, you should be good to go. Now, other than that, everything hooked up pretty easily. The only other thing I kind of want to point out, just because I think it's really cool, is this. This is my new little fuse panel for my AC breakers and my little DC fuses. All my connections for my appliances are right in here, and it's nice and organized. Getting this panel, even though it's like 120 bucks, I think is well worth it if you want to have everything in one nice location and easily visible, just in case you run into any issues. Uh, it's really... It's really easy to work on and it just looks good. All right, so now onto this battery itself. I ended up placing a 250 amp fuse directly on the box. When I need to pull it out, if I have to work on it, it's a lot easier to disconnect it there than having to disconnect a really long cable or 
try to get up in here to disconnect because I don't have a lot of space. As you can see, my fingertips just fit there. Same thing, the negative is connected to the shunt, which is also connected directly to the box on the right side. Then it just runs to a main shutoff switch and then everything runs into this main bus bar which is fused and I can charge my battery via shore power, solar, and off the van's alternator. So I have all three options available. All right, so onto these temperature controllers. I ran the heat pads and the fan to a little on off switch so they didn't have to run constantly. And that's fused down in my little fuse panel. And these little temperature controllers are super simple. All you have to do is set a temperature for it to kick on and a temperature for it to kick off. And in order to set that temperature, you just hold the button and then you can change it and then let go and it'll set. And then again, set your temperature for it to cut off. One bummer is that it's all in Celsius and they're a little off by like 0.2 or 0.3. The little sensors are in different sides of the box in there. So it's not a huge difference, but I really haven't gotten to test the heat pads themselves because it's summer. The fan works well though. It's running right now. And then as it cools off later today, it'll kick off. I have it to kick on when it hits about 90 degrees and I have it to kick off once it drops below 90 degrees. And then with the heating pads, I set it so that it kicks on around 38 degrees and then kicks off uh, once it gets into the 40s. So it's just a nice little safety precaution to make sure that I'm not charging the battery when it's either too hot or too cold and then I end up damaging them. All right, so now let's get into the nitty gritty of what this all costs. So for the battery and the basic components like the cells, the BMS and the battery shunt, which I did get an expensive one, a little Victron Bluetooth guy, I spent around $800. You could spend less if you got a cheaper shunt, but that's around the ballpark you're gonna be spending just to have a workable 280 amp hour 12 volt lithium battery. Now, if you wanted to do a temperature controlled housing like this one, you're gonna to have to spend a little more. So when you look at getting lumber and hardware and heating pads and fans, and temperature controllers and all that stuff, you're gonna spend something around 260 to $300 more. So for that, for the battery cells and the housing, that puts you around, I don't know, $1,100. Still not crazy. It's still not that bad. But that's when you get into trouble because you think, cool, I just spent 1100 bucks and I've got this nice lithium battery. But then you have to make sure you have the right components to charge lithium batteries and those can get more expensive as well. So if you end up getting exactly what I have, you're gonna end up spending something around $2,300. And that's including this DC to DC charger, the charge controller, the inverter, all of the fuses and the wires and everything that went along with this setup. The one thing I'm not including are the solar panels. So if I calculate those into the whole scheme, that's another $700 probably. So the grand total for this battery and this entire electrical setup is $4,100. That's a good amount of money. Again, you'd spend quite a bit more if you went fully with Victron or bought a lithium battery that was, you know, off of one of these bigger brands. For what I have, I think this is a super reliable system. It's gonna last like 10 times longer than my previous one. It's a lot easier to work on and I'm taking up a lot less space with a lot less weight. Now that's not that bad for a semi-decent, like middle of the road lithium battery electrical setup. I hope this gave you a good idea of uh, what it takes and costs to do a DIY lithium battery setup and full system. And if you haven't already, make sure you go check out the first video where I show how to put this battery together uh, or else this all really doesn't make sense. And once again, I just wanna thank everybody for watching. Please give us a like and a subscribe. I've been stuck at 29,000 here for months. I'd like to hit that 30,000 mark if possible. 
And if you want to support the channel, go snag some of the merchandise that we have left uh, or go jump on Patreon and become a Patreon member. I guess you could always go and snag some gear uh, from Anomaly, Anomaly Footwear, my little shoe business that I own. That helps me out a lot as well. Now, I need to get back to wrapping all these renovations on this van because it will have a new owner here in a few weeks. That's right, this van is heading off to its new life and I will be on the hunt for a new one. All right, till next time. <coughs> I'm trying to sit cross-legged so my knees weren't so in the frame as last time. Anyway, I can't sit cross-legged, I've never been able to. I'm just not flexible. I remember in uh, elementary school we'd have those like assemblies uh, and we'd have to go into the gym and sometimes you'd have to like sit on the floor. You'd have to sit cross-legged and uh, I couldn't do it. I'd have to like set my feet up and hold them really tight like this. All right, I'm rambling.